Hi there. Hope you're doing okay. Hope you're not all um, struggling with staying in. Um, I seem to have rather a lot to do. The long arms being slightly neglected at the moment, but we'll soon be back on it. Um, so today I'm going to show you Heat and Bond. Uh, it comes, or we sell it, in three different sorts. Uh, feather light, light, and um, ultra hold. The first two is easily sewn through. The ultra you don't sew through. It's, it's for uh, decorations or things that don't need sewing. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next tutorial. So what I'm going to show you now is how to use heat and bond. And I'm going to show you this uh, very simple little bunny cushion. I've made a quick panel, haven't finished the, the sewing. I'm going to do that later on so you can see it in stages. And uh, show you how to use the heat and bond and how to get it to this stage. And then when we do the next one, I'll show you how to machine round it and quilt it and everything else. Um, if you want to make it into a cushion, how to finish that, and how to, if you want to bind it. So we're going to cover lots of things in one little project. So if you haven't used Heat and Bond before, or any Bonder webs, um, it's got a paper side and it's got a shiny side. You always draw on the paper side. So you take your shape, right, whichever shape you want, you place your Heat and Bond over the shape and you trace it off. Now, when you trace it off, okay, use a pencil, don't use a biro because otherwise it, it smudges a little bit and definitely don't use your friction iron off pen because when you go to iron it in a minute, it'll all iron off. So pencil is fine, so draw around it. Once you've drawn round it, you're then going to cut it out roughly, okay, it's quite important, it must be roughly. Now, once you've cut that out roughly, what you're then going to do is iron it onto the back of the fabric. And you're going to do that rough side down and you're going to iron it onto the back of the fabric, making sure that there is enough fabric all the way round so that it doesn't stick to your ironing board. OK, now, once you've ironed it on, give it a couple minutes just to cool down and then you're going to cut it out on the line. So the fabric and the paper is cut on the line together. The reason it's much easier, to, uh, much better for you to do that is that if you cut the paper and the fabric together, it's less likely to fray. All right, so always cut your pattern out just fractionally bigger. Ta -da. Okay, and then iron it onto the back of the fabric and then cut it out exactly on the line so you have a nice crisp edge ready to sew round, whether it's going to be by hand or by machine or straight stitch or blanket stitch or zigzag, whatever. Okay. We'll do that later, but today we're just doing the, the, the heat and bond. Now, once you've done that, that's ready then to go onto your background fabric. Now, all I have here is a little piece of Osnaberg and some Tilda fabric. Uh, so this is a 12 and a half inch square, and I cut it 12 and a half inch square, and this is a two and a half inch border that I've put all the way round. Okay, this can be a cushion or a placemat, whichever you would prefer. So once you've cut this out, you literally just peel the back off of the paper. Can you see it's peeling apart? Ta -da. Okay, and that's ready then, okay, to be ironed onto your background fabric. And then this, later on, I'm going to layer up and show you how to machine round. Take care, keep the sewing going. 